Hello everybody, today I'm talking about Mercury in Leo. Uh, this is a long transit of Mercury uh, from 24th of July to 1st of October. Mercury comes into Leo with the Gandanta, then he has a combustion and throughout the Leo transit uh, it has aspect of Saturn. So let us explore Hello, I'm Kamala Sutton and we are talking Mercury in Leo. Uh, do remember to subscribe, press the bell notification. So Mercury in Leo, this is from 24th of July to 1st of October. Uh, and uh, you know, this is a long transit. So I've been talking about the last three transits of Mercury in um, Taurus in Gemini in Cancer, they were all very quick and rushed. And now Mercury is going to stay in Leo uh, because it is going to retrograde in Leo. And this is what happens with Mercury every year that it has the swift transits and then followed by one long transit and then again swift transit. So in 2023, all Mercury's retrogrades are in fire signs. So we've had an Aries retrograde, a Leo retrograde, and later on a Sagittarius retrograde. So here we have a long transit of Mercury in uh, Leo. And I would say that the biggest issue about any planet transiting in Leo is that it is having a direct Drishti aspect of Saturn. Uh, so Saturn in Aquarius aspects everything in Leo. Uh, so therefore, as Saturn uh, aspects Mercury, uh, it is irritating it, bothering it, spoiling the energy. Usually Mercury in Leo is quite good, glorious. It is going towards its exaltation. But Saturn's hidden uh, aspect or very obvious aspect but hidden because most of us don't rate it because we don't think about the aspect and uh, in this uh, particular journey Mercury is going to uh, conjoined with uh, Venus on 29th of uh, July. It is with Mars but they don't meet up because as it goes closer to Mars it is getting ready to retrograde. Therefore it slows down and therefore it doesn't catch Mars. So Mars goes into Virgo on 18th of August and Mercury remains in um, Leo. So Mercury's retrograde in Leo is from 23rd of August to 15th of uh, September. So normally, you know, with Mercury retrograde, the day it goes retrograde, the day it goes direct, always is bit very a uh, stressful time. Also, do, throughout the Mercury retrograde, we are uh, reviewing, uh, rechecking everything. If we are talking to somebody, we are careful what we say. And if we have an appointment, we take a double uh, check that we have written it down and we've got alarms working. If you are traveling, there's possibility of delay. But in this uh, transit, the most complicated time is around 3rd, 4th and 5th of uh, uh, September because that is when Venus goes direct, Jupiter goes retrograde and 6th of September, Mercury conjoins with Sun. So it is totally combust. So this uh, particular journey and then what you are seeing is that uh, both Sun and Mercury are aspected by Saturn. So there's always this, we could say, uh, throughout Mercury and Leo transit and the retrograde as well, there's always the outside factor because you can think about Saturn as some outside situation that is bothering somebody that is irritating or circumstances that are irritating. And the thing with Saturn is he's always making us aware of our duty, responsibility, karma that we have to do. And 
it is uh, always Saturn's aspects are considered karmic, so that there's some issues that have to be resolved. And I'm making a separate video about Saturn and uh, do listen to that because that is very important for all of us to know. So then uh, Mercury, uh, I would say by the time it goes direct on 15th of September, it has done most of its drama. There is no conjunction. It's on its own. Sun has moved away. <clears throat> it is getting back to its uh, non combust state. It is much more uh, dynamic and healthy and <laughs> ready to move on. But we have, before we can come to that place, there is a lot of uh, uh, unsettled energy. And Mercury is our thinking, it is our ideas, and of course, uh, it also depends on if you're Gemini, Virgo, he's your ascendant ruler. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But more about thinking and analysis, we can change our mind. Our mind is unsettled. We are not sure what to do. So the best is if you're unsure, take your time. Don't rush into anything and decide uh, accordingly, you know, um, wait it out. And then if you are staying calm and uh, not allowing these outside factors to irritate you, you may be uh, in a much better situation. So how does it affect you? Remember, we are looking from uh, your moon sign as well as your ascendant. Uh, Aries, uh, Mercury is uh, in your fifth house of creativity, children, ideas. Uh, Mercury is not the most important planet for you, but it's a long transit. And I would say that being in the fifth house, it's giving you a lot of ideas and a lot of uh, suggestions, what to do. Uh, and your uh, ruling planet Mars for half of this transit is also in the fifth house. So creativity, ideas, children, these are important, but they are under the aspect of Saturn. So you have to think about that. Uh, but I would say if thoughts are coming, ideas are coming, uh, write them down, put them on in your iPad, iPhone, whichever way you do, and then you can process them later on. You can look at them and it can also bring a lot of opportunities for you, but there's always something blocking. So be conscious of that. Taurus, Mercury is in your fourth house. Mercury is a good planet for you. Fourth house is connected to home, happiness, uh, a general feel-good factor. And usually Mercury there would be a great transit for you. Uh, but it's the Saturn aspect on Mercury and on your fourth house that is quite important. And it may be feel, making you feel that you want to move home or do something about your home. Uh, and so if you are feeling unsettled, think about it. And Mercury is bringing the thought process about uh, where you want to be, what you want to do regarding your property and home. Uh, Gemini, Mercury is your Lagna Lord. And it is in the third house of self-effort, short journeys. What are you going to do? Communication, ideas. So this is a good position. I think it's a long transit. So you have to watch the combustion on 6th of uh, September. Uh, you can be burnt out over doing things. Watch the retrograde. Uh, you know, the Saturn aspect. So there's a lot of things to watch out, but you're used to that, you know, you're used to change, you're used to um, lots of influences. So I would say that try to keep the influences positive and also uh, Saturn's aspect usually encourages travel. So short travel is good, uh, but also to keep yourself calm. Uh, cancer, uh, Mercury is in your second house. Second house is the house of money. And, uh, you know, Mars is there, which is a good planet. Venus is going to come there. So Sun is going to come there. 
So money area, your savings is very important. So this may be a good time uh, to think about it, to decide how you're going to handle it, what you're going to do. Uh, I would say this is the most important thing that uh, you consider. Taking important decisions, avoid mercury retrograde, and important decisions specifically about money and finances, and watch how the moon is doing, uh, because if the moon is going through a difficult transit, then you will feel it as well. Leo, uh, Mercury uh, deals with two houses of money. Uh, it is the second and 11th house ruler. He's in your ascendant, so you are certainly thinking about your finances. But the Saturn aspect is telling me that you're worrying about your finances. And maybe you're thinking that uh, whether you have earning enough or whether you're uh, saving enough or uh, your security. Uh, so financial security is front and center. And this Mercury is uh, very volatile up to all sorts of things. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's not giving you a clear cut answer. And I would say that wait till after 1st of October when Mercury is exalted and in your second house, maybe there is more uh, clarity then. Also, you know, you are in the long haul having an aspect of Saturn and I'm making a separate video about it. So do uh, watch that because it is a you know, important factor in consideration about how you feel. Virgo, uh, Mercury is your Lagna Lord, Moon Lord. It is transiting your uh, 12th house in Leo, and this is a long transit in the 12th house. So 12th house is the house of expenses, of loss, and uh, it is important that when a planet is transiting the 12th house and uh, to be careful of how you spend and uh, generally to manage your expenses and not uh, big expenses so that you are not out of pocket later on. And Mercury is there for a long time. Uh, so that is there. Then 12th house also deals with foreign travel. 12th house also deals with spirituality. So maybe for Virgos, this is a good time to focus on something spiritual, doing some charitable work, doing uh, something for other people and not making expensive financial mistakes. Uh, Libra, uh, Mercury is a good planet for you. It is in your 11th house of uh, finances, uh, profit, uh, general uh, good energy uh, for you. Uh, so I would say that this can be great to uh, earn money and get opportunities to earn money. And it is just that you have to manage the uh, Saturn aspect on um, your 11th house. That means sometimes uh, things come with some restriction or delay. Uh, and Mercury is there for a long time. And as a good planet, I would say largely he is going to give a positive result. Uh, Scorpio, Leo is your 10th house. 10th house is house of career. Uh, and uh, Mercury is there. And so is um, Mars is there till 18th. And uh, we get number of planets crossing your 10th house. So I would say uh, there are a lot of opportunities for you professionally and you're thinking about it and especially this Mercury's transit and you'll see me again and again talking about professional life because all the planets are crossing there. But at the same time, Saturn's aspect is there. Usually Saturn's aspect suggests that you may be thinking about changing your job or making some uh, changes professionally for you. It could be within where you're working or it could be uh, totally different. Uh, as Scorpio, you don't like to make changes quickly. Uh, so this is a fundamental decision for you. Take your time. Mercury is giving you the ideas and thinking uh, and uh, that is what is most important. Sagittarius. Uh, Mercury is uh, transiting your ninth house of good ideas, good thinking, uh, higher mind. Normally, it's uh, if you're focusing on a more spiritual aspect of life, then the aspect of Saturn will not bother. But if you are looking at more uh, 
material things or you're thinking also of further education and study, you may find even on your spiritual self, everything is coming with a delay. And Mercury is definitely giving you ideas where to move, what to do. And your ninth house is going to be highly occupied by different planets. So I would say uh, moving towards that, you may be also thinking about going to a pilgrimage, to doing something uh, spiritual, and that would be good. Capricorn, uh, Mercury is transiting your eighth house. Eighth house is house of change and transformation, and it is unexpected changes. Things that we don't think, and suddenly you may get some idea, oh my God, I have to do this, I must change everything, and it can bring impulsive energy. So that is what we are always being uh, careful about, that we are not uh, giving in to our impulses and taking extra care. And uh, for Capricorn, there are so many planets transiting the eighth house right now, as we are recording, Mars is there, Venus is there, and then Sun will come there, then there'll be a new moon there. So a lot of Leo planets are there, which is your eighth house. And Saturn is aspecting, and unlike for other people, Saturn is you, uh, because he's your Lagna Lord, Moon Lord. So when he's aspecting all these planets, it means you're interested in those areas, but you're also somehow self-obstructing. And also, uh, you know, eighth house, uh, interest in eighth house, secret knowledge, but uh, you may be encouraging yourself to make some changes that you're not conscious of. So slow and steady wins the race. Aquarius, uh, all the planets, Mercury is in your seventh house. Seventh house is house of relationship, marriage, spouse, and um, your uh, ascendant ruler, Saturn, is aspecting your seventh house. So that means that is somewhere you're interested in. And all these planets are coming into your seventh house. So sometimes it could mean that there's too much choice uh, where to go, what to do. But Saturn's long-term aspect on your seventh house also shows that uh, there may be some unsettled uh, issues and there may be some outside interference as far as uh, marriage and relationships are concerned. And if you're Aquarius moon, you're also in deep sare sati. So you are not uh, really should not be making uh, quick decisions and you should treat everything with caution and restraint and that is the best. Uh, Pisces, Mercury travels into your sixth house. Sixth house is house of um, obstacles. It is house of health and healing. So this may be a good time to think about your health, to heal yourself, to do changes in your uh, personal lifestyle that you can optimize your health energy. Lots of planets in your sixth house, so you may feel opposition from other people. It may be feeling not so, um, you know, comfortable uh, but uh, it is important for you to try to overcome and to uh, do some karma yoga, selfless service. Uh, that is good. Give back to society. Maybe think about some charitable work. That would be a good remedy for you. So that is it for today. Uh, do remember to subscribe, press the bell notification. Thank you.